Welcome to Magic Arcanum, I'm Ryan Gomez, and I'm so glad you're here because it's story time. Last week we talked about my favorite planeswalker, Vraska, and where she fits into the current and past magic story. You guys left a lot of great feedback and comments on that video, so let me say thank you for doing that. Today, we're going to be taking a look at another strong, rising female Planeswalker character who has a bone to pick with Nicol Bolas. We're talking about Vivian Reed. Vivian made her debut recently in Core Set 2019 with two Planeswalker cards and nine others that reference her by name or in the flavor text. As we headed into Core Set 2019, it became clear the focus would be on Nicol Bolas. He was going to get a new legendary creature card that flipped into a Planeswalker, and there'd be four other Elder Dragons, his siblings from back on Dominaria, the survivors of the Elder Dragon War. The set would also contain five monocolored Planeswalkers who had a direct relationship with Nicol Bolas. This left Wizards of the Coast with a problem because to date, there hadn't really been a green Planeswalker that had that personal connection. So as a solution, they decided to introduce an entirely new Green Planeswalker who would have a brand new backstory tying her directly to Nicol Bolas. Enter Vivian Reed. Vivian is from the plane of Scala. And Scala is divided into two kind of big groups. There's the Smaragdi, which are rangers and druids, and they kind of live out in the forest and the wilderness. That's Vivian's group. And then there's the Nura, which are a group of advanced builders who kind of handled all the technology and city life. And that's what life is like on Scala. And if I'm pronouncing these wrong, you can fight me in the comments this time because I don't know. Now, at some point, Nicol Bolas stopped by and took an interest in the innovations of Nura. This is kind of on theme for him. Remember, he sent Tezzeret to Kaladesh to steal the Planar Bridge, and he used Veraska to go to Ixalan and steal the Immortal Sun. Every Nicol Bolas Planeswalker card and both of his legendary creature cards require black, red, and blue mana to cast. And in Magic, blue is the color most closely associated with artifice. So in all the recent stories, Nicol Bolas has been obsessed with acquiring powerful artifacts. This fits perfectly with his color identity and explains why he would be on Scala trying to get whatever the Nura are building there. Philosophically, each color on the Magic color wheel represents a different idea. And blue, including Nicol Bolas, is all about seeking perfection. One way they do that is by making artifacts. They represent achievements in science, technology, design, and knowledge. Green, meanwhile, is all about the natural order of things. It strives to accept things as they are rather than try to achieve perfection. Green hates artifice. Green is really great at being a natural balance to blue because green has some of the best tools for destroying and exiling artifacts and enchantments. So since Vivian is a green planeswalker, all of her cards and abilities should reference this aspect of the color, at least in some way. And they do! Vivian Reed's minus three ability can destroy any artifact, enchantment, or creature with flying. That last part may seem oddly specific, but there is a reason for it. So back on Scala, Nicol Bolas got what he was looking for from the Nura and began destroying the plane because he thought there was nothing else of value left there. What did he take from them? I have no idea. They actually left it intentionally vague, so it could show up later, or maybe never at all. In a desperate last stand, the Nura and the Smaragdi pooled their efforts in creating a weapon to fight back. Their creation was the Arc Bow which was infused with the essence of every animal who ever lived on Scala. Unfortunately, the weapon was completed too late. Vivian stood among the burning forests of her home plane when her spark ignited and planes walked her away, along with the arc bow, making her the sole survivor of Scala. Wait. 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 So that's why she can destroy creatures with flying. She has a bow. Before we get into the rest of her cards and abilities and place within the greater story, let's discuss this connection with Nicol Bolas for a minute because I see a problem here. If Vivian is going to use the arc bow for its intended purpose, defeating Nicol Bolas, she has a very small window of time to get herself to Ravnica, make friends with Jace, Veraska, and all the rest of them, and get involved in the big final fight that's happening there. She basically has to appear in one of the next two sets. Her best opportunity is in Ravnica Allegiance this January, possibly as part of the Gruul clans. You heard it here first. 
The Arcbow started with an infusion of every creature on Scala, but as Vivian has traveled around as a planeswalker, it has become more powerful and now contains more creatures. The last place she headed was Shiv, which is part of Dominaria and home to the famous Shiv and Dragon. Vivian's looking for creatures that will give her an edge in the fight against Nicol Bolas, and having a bow full of other dragons might just do it for her. I could see a new Planeswalker card for Vivian that gives her a bit of a red identity to reflect some of the raw power that's now contained within the bow. Or instead of a Planeswalker card, she might get a flashy sorcery or instant that lets you play creatures out of your deck without paying mana for them. Something like a Court of Calling, Tooth and Nail, or Collected Company. No matter how they choose to represent it, Vivian could fire off a whole quiver of arrows and summon a whole menagerie of creatures, but would any of them be strong enough to beat Nicol Bolas? He's already defeated the Gatewatch, and he beat Ugin, who had his own army of dragons. I'd love to hear your speculation in the comments, but first, let's go back and look at some of the other cards that feature Vivian, starting with her two Planeswalker cards. Vivian Reed costs three green green and starts with five loyalty. This seems appropriate. She is an experienced hunter, and she carries a mighty weapon, so she should show up ready to fight. While each of these abilities is an adequate fit for Vivian and appropriate for her first Planeswalker card, none of them are particularly exciting, and worse, they are not unique. A Johnny and Kiora can both look for lands or creatures among the top few cards of your deck. Baraska can destroy the same permanence for the same minus cost. And Domri, Gideon, Soren, and Elspeth all make emblems that help make your creatures more powerful. Her other Planeswalker card, Vivian of the Arcbow, isn't much better. In fact, it's almost identical to Huatli Dinosaur Knight. Now, since these are both in the Planeswalker decks, that's not a huge problem. But it would be nice if this was supposed to be Vivian's introduction to the bigger lineup of major characters, and they gave her some unique abilities. So if her Planeswalker cards leave something to be desired, what about her other cards from Corset 2019? Bog Stomper, Bristling Boar, Giant Spider, and Gigantosaurus are kind of underwhelming. I mean, the boar is a little hard to block, but otherwise this is a pretty unremarkable group of creatures. Aggressive Mammoth and Prodigious Growth are kind of curious. Uh, they both show really big creatures, but it's not clear if Vivian had anything to do with that. Uh, they clearly weren't made by the Arcbow, so these must be creatures she just encountered on a plane somewhere. This becomes even more curious when we look at cards that are coming from the bow. The art for Scala Wolf and Vivian's Jaguar both clearly show that these guys are being summoned from the bow, but they're not very big or strong. They each only have three power. The wolf lets you look at the top five cards of your library and put any green card you find there into your hand, which is frustrating because the Vivian Reed Planeswalker card can look at the top four cards, but that one can also grab lands. Why have two abilities be so similar, but so different? This does not show me who Vivian is. Does she care the most about creatures? then why can she sometimes get lands or other cards that are green, like instants and sorceries or enchantments? Before Guilds of Ravnica came out, we got a three-part mini-series that followed Vivian on Ixalan. She went to a vampire-owned zoo and tried to free all the animals there after she saw them being tortured for entertainment. We got to see how the Arcbow acquires new animals. It has to absorb their essence as they die. So that kind of raises a question, right? What would have happened if she had beaten Nicol Bolas with that bow back on Scala? Because the bow already had the essence of all the animals that lived there. So would she have saved the plane only to have no animals left alive? If I was tasked with designing Vivian all over again, I'd start by looking for ways to reward having different creatures in play. If the Ark bow is supposed to be kind of this magical zoo, that represents a bunch of different creatures, then find a way to make that relevant, right? Reward the player for having a deck full of different powers and toughness and mana costs and creature types. Make it really different. Planeswalkers should have clean and interesting abilities that interact in fun and unique ways. It should challenge us as deck builders and it should excite us to follow these characters in the lore and see how they get involved in the story. Vivian does none of this. 
her abilities are all kind of borrowed from other cards, and even the ones that she has don't work consistently from card to card. Any deck built around her is going to be on rails, right? They're all going to feel the same because you're drawn to the same cards. There's no incentive to diversify. It can be tough to make a new character that feels fresh and exciting and has a meaningful impact on the story. Vivian was born with her clock already ticking because she's tied to a villain who's about to have his major final showdown with another group of characters that we already know a whole lot more about and frankly, like more. It's really unfortunate that Vivian's introduction actually left so many unanswered questions because I feel once Nicol Bolas is defeated, we're not going to hear a whole lot from Vivian going forward, which is a real shame. If they had done a better job carving out a unique mechanical space for her, we might have had players who were really excited to see her come back again and again. Instead, with Nicol Bolas gone, Vivian will be left kind of hollow and empty. Will she be a recurring member of the magic story? Or will she fall by the wayside like Tybalt and Cough and so many other one-hit wonders? Let me know in the comments what you think is next for Vivian, and then like this video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the great stories you'll only find here on Magic Arcanum. I'll see ya!